Eric Ortiz, welcome to Texas Christian University virtually. Hey, how are you doing, Guy? Um, well, it's an honor to be here. I'm excited. All right. So, Eric, uh, for those of us who don't, are not familiar with you, what do you do? What is your title? Where do you work? And what do you do every day? Sure. So my name is Eric Ortiz. I am currently, my current title is the Executive Vice President of Operations at Magical Brands. Um, and then I also spent uh, about four years as the Executive Director of Sales and Acquisition at McKay Advertising and Activation, uh, primarily focusing on digital advertising and, and activating my clients' uh, advertising campaigns. And that's where we met, right? I was a professor at uh, University of South Florida where you got your undergraduate degree. Eric, what kind of an undergrad student were you? What kind of an undergraduate student was I? Um, that's a great question. Um, you know, I would say that I was probably an average student and, and you know, average is probably pretty nice. Um, you know, I basically was there to, you know, if they had an attendance policy, I showed up because I had to. And, you know, give me the tests and hopefully I can scrape by with, you know, with a C and, and get my degree and move on to the next thing that I got to take so I can get my degree and, and kind of get out of here. Um, that that was, was sort of my, my, my start to the process within, um, within college. It developed over, over years after that. But, you know, at, at the onset for a large part of it, that's, that's kind of where I was. Yeah. And I assume that many of the students sitting in my class right now are feeling the same, right? <laughs> they, they chose this undergrad in advertising, PR, and strategic communication. Yeah, they're not really sure what they want to do after graduation. And right now, even in this research class, right, believe it or not, may have not been their first choice. It's a required class, graduation. They just want to get through it, get the grade, and move on. So give us a little bit of advice about, tell us about your journey and how research has become a part of your career. Sure, sure. Um... So I think what's important here to note is uh, I would absolutely have been the student that would have been like, I don't want to take research methods. Um, it's uh, probably would have been the last choice that I had um, at the time when I, when I started. Um, throughout college, I, I actually, uh, did, you know, through the University of South Florida where I was at, I actually ended up making a really good relationship with one of my professors um, who was really driven towards kind of more the analytical side of, of marketing. Um, which is actually really where I started to gain a little bit of interest, not only because I, you know, connected with the teacher, but also the, the topics interested me a little bit more so. Um, so essentially, you know, within them, he kept giving us example after example after example of, you know, marketing scenarios that were really based on the real world, you know, and a scenario that had blown up in the news or something that had happened that was resulted around a business decision. Um, and I think that really sculpted kind of how I thought about marketing moving forward. Um, and, I, and I really decided from that point, like, hey, there's some actionable things here. I can make a difference. I can increase the, a company's bottom line while they're advertising if I can make good decisions for them. So that makes sense. Why don't I, why don't I step more into, into the advertising world? Um, so that's a, essentially when I got the job at, at McKay Advertising um, as an account executive and kind of rose up the ranks to become the director of sales after signing a couple clients. Um, can, you, can you speak about some of the clients? Are you, can you yeah, your privilege? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, so my first client was actually the University of South Florida's athletics program. Um, so that was, uh, I got to tell you, one of the most gratifying uh, feelings in the world, uh, short anecdote, was my first ever meeting uh, with with USF Athletics after they were my client. I walk into USF Athletics. Obviously, I just graduated, you know what I mean? I'm thinking I'm looking sharp and I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to go. My first big meeting with a client and I get to the desk and the lady's like, uh, so are you, sorry, you're here for an interview or? I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm here to see my client, please. <laughs> uh, so that, that was great. Um, and then worked with some, some various other organizations, Freedom Boat Clubs, a national business around, around the country, um, as well as uh, Bioderm, which was a medical device company, kind of were my three biggest, and Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital based here in South, Tam or excuse me, in um, St. Pete, St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, so healthcare, medical devices, um, sports and entertainment, and, um, and boating as well. So a little bit of uh, a variety of, of different clients there to work on and, and Okay, so how does research come into play? Research, um, I gotta tell you, Guy, could potentially be the most important part of, of the entire conversation, right? Um, you know, everything that we were doing was based on looking at 
data, making decisions based on data and making actionable decisions that I can point back to. And when my manager or when my boss or when the CEO or the founder comes to me and says, hey, why are you making this decision? Then we can go back and look at the data points and see how that I got there, how I got there. Um, and I would say the other piece from a research standpoint, like, you know, you'd think that, you know, from a marketing perspective, you just want to do research only on your consumer, right? Like I understand, understand my consumer. Yes, that is absolutely one of the most crucial things you do, but also, you know, you need to be monitoring your competitors. So market research is not just about what my consumer needs and thinks and wants. It's also what is company B doing and why are they doing this particular part better than us? And how can we gain or glean any ideas that we might be able to apply on what we're doing? So, you know, as I look at research, I look at it in three parts. One, understanding your consumer. Two, understanding your competitors or the market, the space around your particular product or services. And then three, the reporting on that. Like, what actually happened? Did our assumptions come true? Are we driving bottom line revenue or, you know, are we, are we saying nice words and making pretty pictures? I think there's a, there's a big difference. So ultimately we're talking about data driven decision-making, right? And there are so many tools out there, so many methodologies. You spoke about secondary research, kind of knowing what's happening in the industry that you're in, whether it's um, these days we have healthcare, unlike completely unlike 2019. Right, so healthcare is transformed. We may have a new healthcare industry based on the elections of the result. Who takes Congress, legislation, right? And um, there are a lot of factors that shape it. So secondary research, primary research data that you collect by yourself, whether it's surveys, focus groups, or you've dealt a lot with social media analytics. This is something we're gonna be touching upon in my class a little bit, and then hopefully my students will take the social media analytics class later on in their semester. And McKay Advertising, you guys are all about social media analytics, right? Absolutely, absolutely. All about can metrics. You talk, and, can you talk about how analytics are changing the game of advertising these days? Sure. Uh, analytics was, was basically all we were about um, to, for the most part. And, and really it was about um, talking to business people. So you got to remember, you know, I'm, I'm a, a fresh young graduate from a university and here I am talking to an established business person, a CEO who's been running a company for 30 years and probably done pretty successfully since he's been running it for 30 years. And here I am bright eyed and bushy tailed going to tell him that he needs to change his marketing and that Facebook is the way to go. Right. Mm -hmm. He's Hold on. For, for my students. Facebook is a platform that 35 <laughs> year old plus people go on. I'm Talk showing my age. Go for it. Or TikTok. Yeah, similar to those things, similar, yeah. the predecessor. Uh, so the book of faces, uh, as we also call it, uh, you know, here, he's probably not that excited, right, to, to try this or, or say, hey, you know, I'm going to get my 20 year old cousin or nephew to do it for me. But really what I what we try to, to speak to our clients about was about that there's business analytics behind it. So it's not just about, you know, I posted a pretty picture. It's about, I had this engagement. I had this many comments on it. I had this many people with traffic that come to our website and actually added something to my cart. I had this many people purchase something. And most importantly, how much did they purchase for? So that when I go back to Mr. Business Owner and I say, hey, we've spent X on a particular marketing campaign. How much did we make on the back end? What did this result for you? So as opposed to a cost, you start to make marketing an investment um, and, and kind of switching that now to, to what I do as an operations standpoint. So I set over our marketing section and I have conversations about that reporting. So I say, OK, well, this is my thoughts on it. What, do we, what are we doing in Spain? OK, well, what are we doing in the UK? Why is that particular metric different and why is this working better? Or maybe we should try this particular tactic because this is what I'm seeing in the data. So one of the things that, you know, we always talk about reporting, the last thing I want to hear when we're talking, you know, in a reporting session is I think should not never be. I think we're looking at the data. It should be based on what we know and what we can track and how we can prove value to our organizations or, or to our clients. And um, when I was working at McKay, Eric, last question for you. If you were to speak to yourself five years ago or to my students sitting in the research class right now, give us one piece of advice to take away? Uh, my biggest piece of advice, um, you know, as I, as I think back to all of the people that, that spoke to me, um, I, I made a really good connection with one professor um, when I was like a junior in college. 
So you can only imagine that's a pretty long time along the call, along the educational track to finally meet someone that you like. So my, my suggestion would be, as I look back and think about a lot of those folks, um, people like Professor uh, Golan and, and others, you know, they're really invested in making you better. This is for you. It's for the skills that, that you are eventually going to need in the workplace. And I have realized that more and more as I start to think about, man, you know, I can't believe that lady told me this, or I can't believe he said that I should be doing this instead. Oh, this is so boring. I don't want to do this. And then five years later, I look back and I'm like, man, I'm really glad that person said that to me. I'm really glad I was doing these particular things. You know, it's not for, it's not for no reason. Um, they, they do have experience and, and I would trust in that, um, in, the, in the process that you're going through and, and go all in. Because I think, you know, it will really start to position you very differently if you already have a lot of these skills when you enter the workforce, as opposed to trying to learn them when you enter the workforce. You're gonna immediately see um, kind of a different perception um, even internally and externally within your company and, and, and how they'll see you outside of it. Eric Cortez, thank you as always. Absolutely, it's a pleasure. Um, I look forward to getting together when all this is done. And um, uh, thank you to everyone um, over there at TCU. It's been a pleasure, looking forward to it. And I'm sure Guy will share my information. If anybody has any additional questions, I'm happy to, uh, to answer or connect as usual. We'll definitely do that. Mr. LinkedIn, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Have a great one.